most worshipful the Grand Master, uh, right worshipful DDGMs and uh, line officers, uh, brethren all. This uh, lecture is on uh, Masonic etiquette as the DDGM. Being appointed as a DDGM, we should assume that uh, you have a good grasp at this time of basic Masonic etiquette, such as how to address the East, use sign of fidelity, and moving about your lodge. This lecture will concentrate more on etiquette you should concern yourself as a DDGM and Grand Lodge officer. There's There is a bit of difference between etiquette and protocol. Protocol mostly deals with where to be at the right time and to do the right things. Etiquette deals with the behavior uh, when you get there. So what is Masonic etiquette? With few exceptions in the lodge, there's no real difference in it from regular etiquette. Etiquette determines courtesy and behavior in a personal situation or an individual or as part of a group. Masonic etiquette is a guideline necessary to produce order and dignity. Important one, etiquette is not ritual, constitution or regulations but are mere common courtesies and others just suggestions based on a long and successful usage. Ordinary common sense should dictate your manners. And Masonic etiquette is used in cases to avoid embarrassment. Etiquette as the DDGM. As a DDGM, you are the Grand Master's direct representative in your district. Your office carries the same integrity as the Grand Masters. Poor knowledge and misuse of Masonic etiquette by a DDGM embarrasses and demeans the office of the Grand Master in the Grand Lodge in Nova Scotia. The brethren of the jurisdiction look to you as an example of what good Masonic etiquette should look like in and out of the lodge. Uh, with the Cornerstone Project now bringing our lodges more into the public eye, as a Grand Officer, you are the main public face of our fraternity in your district. Now we'll look at uh, your official visits, some good etiquette for your official visit. Send, your, send the Lodge Secretary a written letter detailing your visit. Written correspondence is not only more formal, than email, it also often doesn't get overlooked and forgotten the same way. Inform the Grand Secretary of your official visit at least seven days prior and as early as possible is better as not to conflict with a Grand Master's visit. If you intend to inspect the Lodge records before meeting, let the Lodge know and arrive early enough it's not to disrupt the lodge opening. Uh, as we all know, being past masters, you know, the DGM shows up a couple minutes before it'll, you're ready to open a lodge and it throws everything into turmoil as you're trying to get things done. So, yeah, give the lodge enough time to let the inspector records and do that if you plan to do it before the lodge or after the lodge. But, uh, brethren, accompanying the official visitor, do not give grand honors, but stand on the sign of fidelity. And that's when everybody comes in at the altar with the grand master or the DDGM and the director of ceremonies calls for grand honors. We just stand on the sign of fidelity at that time. And the meeting address, make a few comments about lodge conduct, lodge records, ritual, Complimenting poorly performed ritual embarrasses the worshipful master who already knows things went wrong. And as a DG, DGGM, complimenting only makes the issue seem less important. And um, under no circumstances, publicly reproach anyone 
for a mistake in ritual or protocol. Any errors or concerns should be drawn to the attention of the worshipful master in quiet conversation and confirmed later by a letter. Grand Osser, Grand Osser Lodge Etiquette. <clears throat> I bring these to your attention as I observed all of these displayed at some time or another by Grand Lodge officers. Observe the dress etiquette for whatever meeting you are attended. You are better to be dressed in a higher order than dress lower. You shall, you shall have the, uh, an opportunity at either banquet before or during the official visit in the lodge meeting for you, the district deputy grandmaster, to make a major address. Arrange this with your worship with the worshipful master beforehand. Uh, it's a good idea to put this in the letter that you intend to announce your visit that you will be making an address and like I say, um, arrange it with the worshipful master so he schedules some time for you to make your address and nobody's sitting there embarrassing um, gawking on saying oh oh okay. <laughs> the Grand Lodge official visitor is always the last to speak in open lodge and no one should ever address the lodge after the Grand Master. At this point, the worshipful master should be conducting either the closing ritual or ritual for the visitors, official visitors early departure. Okay, so basically in a nutshell, if the grand master's at a meeting and the worshipful master calls for addressing the lodge, when the grand master speaks, that's it. Uh, anything else after that is ritual that is being done in the lodge. Nobody gets up and addresses the lodge. That's very poor etiquette to do that after the uh, official visitor speaks. When sitting in the East, remember your posture as a Grand Lodge officer. You should sit straight, not slouched, legs not crossed, and never uh, have your cell phone out in open lodge. And I have seen that in the East, you know, with, that it is like the brethren sitting in this in the um, lodge, they look at that and it's very poor taste. Now we'll look at social etiquette. Uh, formal banquets and festive boards. Few realize how much of an impression we make when eating or drinking at an event. Some simple rules of etiquette to follow are always RSVP an invitation to a banquet. If cocktails or a meet and greet is held before dinner, liber limit your alcohol consumption. If drinking beer at a reception, use a glass, do not drink from the bottle. At a pre-banquet reception, mix and mingle with the entire room and not show favoritism to one area as standing in one group gives the appearance that you are in a clique. Do not sit down until the head table has sat down. The sign of fidelity is not used at grace and not um, when not wearing regalia. So that's a good one. The sign of fidelity is never used unless we're wearing regalia. Other than the menu program or the program, do not read or use your phone during dinner. If you excuse yourself to for the restroom or an important phone call, do not announce it. Just ask to be excused without giving a reason. Never start a course at, before the head table, guest of honor, or president of the dinner starts. Multi-course meals, if you've never encountered them, use your forks and knives from out to in. The outer uh, fork is what you eat with your first course and inward. The napkin goes on your lap when eating, your chair when excused and folded on the table when you're finished. Respect the guest speaker by being quiet and not getting up during their speech. 
like a lot of uh, formal banquets and dinners that you may be invited to as a DDGM will have a keynote speaker at some point of the program. And it's always good to thank the host for the meal and it is considered good etiquette to send a note of thanks within a couple of days after the event. And we don't usually encounter this type of settings, but, but they are out there. And like I say, working from out to in as the courses are served is the easiest way. Uh, cocktail receptions and informal festive boards. Cocktail receptions and many lodge festive boards have become more informal. However, there are still rules of etiquette you should follow as a Grand Lodge officer. Arrive on time for the event based on the invitation, not fashionably late, early, or late. Again, remember to be cautious of your alcohol intake to prevent uncomfortable events. Simple one for stand-ups is keep your drink in your left hand so your right hand is dry for shaking hands. I don't know if you've ever been to a reception where Somebody's got a wet palmy hand and you shake their hand and you feel like they just held a fish. <laughs> if finger food is served, use a plate or a napkin. The main goal should not be free food or free alcohol. As a DDGM, you are a representative representing the Grand Master. Do it with dignity. It is a good idea to eat before you go. This will keep you focused on the purpose and help prevent alcohol consumption on an empty stomach. Although food may be served on a toothpick, do not use it to remove food from your teeth. Dismiss yourself and remove the food privately in the restroom mirror. Never litter and always place items back on the serving tray. If you find an item that is unpleasant, place it in your napkin and dispose of it. Here's a good one. Use a filter when you talk. Do not let unofficial Grand Lodge business slip out in your conversation or share something off color or controversial. You don't want to be the lodge's next top topic of gossip or a rumor mill. Don't monopolize any individual. 10 to 15 minutes per person is a good amount of time for small talk. And last on this one, turn your cell phone ringer off. And if you are expecting an important call or text, excuse yourself and take it in the lobby or ante room. Toasts. <clears throat> Toasts are a very important part of Masonic protocol and etiquette as a means of extending thanks and respect to certain persons. The following toasts are, oh, I guess spelling error there, are appropriate at a festive board or dinner. The queen, the craft, the most worshipful, the most worshipful, the grand master, the grand lodge in Nova Scotia, the visitors, the newly initiated, past or raised brother, brothers, as in brother John Doe. The newly invest, installed and invested officers. Only toast number three to six will require response. Practice giving a, the practice of giving a toast to absent brethren is now common in Nova Scotia and no uh, response is possible. Glasses should never be touched together, clinked, and are simply raised to about chin level prior to giving the toast. Do not drink the whole glass during the first toast. A toast should never be given with an empty glass. Water is acceptable to toast with the exception of a naval dinner or in a, oh, a naval dinner. If you're at uh, a naval dinner, you never drink in toast and water because it's a old rumor that the uh, it's a drowning sailor. And in a Royal Canadian uh, mess, like if there's a dinner at the wardroom, most times the queen is toasted sitting down. That's just another old tradition. And like we do have certain 
dinners and banquets at those uh, establishments. So um, just good to know that etiquette there. And as a DDGM, you should be ready to respond to toast number three at any given time. Like if the, um, like I say, if the Grand Master is not at the dinner, you are his representative in that district. The district church service. <clears throat> Many districts hold a divine service and planning for a district ser divine service should start as early as possible. Arrangements for the service must be made with the minister of the church. A budget avoids embarrassment and should include a lump sum donation to the church. Be prepared for your role in the service. Make sure you are familiar with the reading and have the same Bible version or printed copy to avoid stumbling over passage. I don't know if anybody's read it in church at times, but you go up to read and the passage that you were reading is a different version of the Bible and it can cause you to stumble and um, find it quite hard to read sometimes if, uh, like I say, if you're reading a different version than what you, what you pre-read. Arrange with the minister to greet the congregation with them after the service, as they were kind enough to allow use of your church. Observe the dress protocol for a church service of morning suit, director suit, or a business suit, and not tuxedos. A written note of thanks to the minister and the church afterwards is very good etiquette. Dress. <clears throat> Being properly dressed for the situation is an important part of etiquette. As DDGM, you will need to concentrate on the following orders of dress. Semi-formal dress is the traditional black tuxedo suit, either a black cummerbund or black waistcoat, and is usually with black bow tie, white gloves, and either a lie down or wingtip collar. Sorry, a white shirt. Worn for evening lodge meetings and daytime lodge meetings. Business dress is usually a suit or sport jacket and trousers with a shirt and tie. The best Masonic look for this is a black or dark blue suit, white shirt and necktie. And don't forget your white gloves. As a DDGM, it is worn for church and memorial services. And another one we don't have here common, but it is a order dress that some, some brothers are starting to get now is what we call the director suit or as is better known in the UK, a Masonic suit. This consists of a black suit jacket, necktie, dark gray striped trousers, sometimes referred to as hickory striped trousers, a black vest or a gray vest or a waistcoat as some people uh, refer to it is also acceptable and white gloves. This is a good option to the morning suit and also a good substitute for tuxedos in daytime as it is thought to be poor etiquette to wear tuxedos outside of the lodge before 6 p.m. except in our fraternal organizations. A bit more on dress etiquette. Common rules of dress etiquette. Clean, shine black shoes with a tuxedo or director suit. Black, show, or black shoes are always in good taste, a good choice. If you go for brown or oxblood with a suit, make sure they are shiny and no suede because they uh, take away from your, your look. Regularly dry clean your tuxedos and suits so you don't appear wrinkled. A plain white dress shirt is more dignified than a colored shirt. And as a DDGM, you should avoid loud colored shirts. Wear either a solid color or Masonic print neck or bow tie and avoid really loud ties. Like you can see some really loud um, Masonic ties out there, but as a DDGM, you're representing usually in a grand, like in official visit where uh, I'm gonna say conservative style tie. Limit lapel pins to one or two. If you have more than one of them that you like, change them about but stay with just one or two at a time. Bright whimsy socks may be the style, but avoid these. 
As a DGGM, they are not dignified and your socks can be seen when you're sitting in the east. Remember that as the DDGM, you should be an example of good Masonic etiquette, and you will appear undignified even in formal clothes if your look is dirty, wrinkled, gaudy, or loud. And this sends the wrong message to the brethren, and new Masons cannot ex be expected to adhere to our dress requirements if they see poor examples from Grand Lodge officers. So avoid that type of suit. and. If you really have that extra uh, pin, you can get the Masonic lapel extender to add the extra ones to nowadays. In closing, remember, good Masonic etiquette is more than protocol. As a DDGM, your behavior is always under scrutiny of the brethren. Read the protocol and etiquette man manual to refresh yourself on your lodge etiquette. First names are not used in Open Lodge. It is Brother Secretary or Brother Smith. If you use the full title, be consistent. If you use Right Worshipful Brother Smith, do not later refer to him as just Brother Smith. That's, I mean, we can make, you can say it, but like I say, if you use the title of a brother, you should always keep that title throughout the meeting to uh, maintain that air of dignity. Don't sleep in the East. Southwest or North for that matter. Remember, you are the Grand Master's representative. Everything you do and say says reflects on the Grand Master and his official office. Have a great year. Enjoy the honor and satisfaction of your office brings. The end. <laughs>